Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm going to start doing a two minute Tuesdays. Uh, why not? I just feel like talking to you a little bit more and maybe I don't want to talk for 10 minutes like On the Bucket. At the end of this video I will link you to On the Bucket if you do want to listen to some more talking about various different aspects of reptile keeping and that kind of stuff. But I just figured we'll go over some topics and uh, spend a little time together, me and you, even though I'm here all by myself in my snake room. Ariel's been watching the Super Bowl like mid shows and it's just it's so easy to be stuck on the TV basically doing nothing so I figured let's use some time and be productive so we're gonna start two minute Tuesdays on Tuesday well yeah I guess yeah that makes sense so today I want to talk to you about cohabilitation why you shouldn't cohabilitate uh, and basically it comes down to this the biggest reason that cohabilitation is hated on so much is because there are so many things that could go wrong and if you don't do things properly something will most likely eventually go wrong so that's why it is so like really people are really anti cohabilitation you should always be able to separate the animals if you have to so number one reason for not cohabilitating is to save space if you are if you are cohabilitating, you shouldn't be doing it to save space. You should be doing it because you're breeding them or maybe for some other reasons that I might talk to you about in another episode. But the big one is you 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 don't do it to save space. If you are doing it, you have enough space that you can separate the animals. That's rule number one the next thing never ever feed them together so they should not be fed in the same enclosure and now there are exceptions to this also like let's say you are having a species that is used to cohabilitating then you could kind of feed them separately but it's just you're asking for problems if one of them eats first and then sees the other one eating it could go and take it you know just like me and my little brother he'd get a chocolate bar i'd get a chocolate bar i'd eat mine he'd save his and then I'd go find it and eat it. So the, like, that, that's problem number two. Feeding must be done separately. And now if you want to be extra safe, what I would say is feed them separately, give them time to digest separately, and then put them back together if you are doing that, even though it is highly frowned upon. What was the other reasons? <laughs> I don't ever go by script or anything, so it's always like as we go along. So number one, not to save space. Number two, don't feed them together. And uh, no, number three, cleanliness. Like So now if you're going to have two snakes together, it's going to be twice as much work to keep them clean. You're going to have to go in and check if they've uh, pooped. And there can be twice the amount of poop. So uh, the cleaning twice as much cleaning which brings us into our next point they if one gets sick the other one's gonna get sick if one goes poo poo then the other one can go poo poo and it's just if you're cleaning one on its own usually they make a poo like once a week once every two weeks but now you have two of them in there and it's important to really monitor that next um stress let's say the fifth and final point is stress and if you have two animals that don't want to be together and they end up stressing each other out then you could end up finding one that's just not eating and not doing as well so if you were to keep two snakes together let's say one of them might stop eating so if you have them okay so if you're starting them together then you're not going to know if you putting them together is what caused the problem. So it's always better to start with them kind of separately and know that everything's okay. And then if you were to put them together and one stops eating, then right away you separate them and keep them separate. And that led me to another one, another thought. What was the other thought? The other thought was feeding because you feed them separately someone could get sick blah 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 blah. yes and the final point let's say let's get rid of the fourth say the fourth and third were together so that we can have five good points the last re thing is you never would put a male with a male you just you don't do it because the males are the ones that you're going to have 
issues with each other. Also, we have to remember that each snake is an individual. So even when letting snakes play together, letting snakes kind of hang out, I have found that most of the time they are all fine. But once in a while, you'll end up with one that just doesn't play with others. Like it just wants to be left alone. And you'll get kind of that with... You can think about dogs, it's probably a terrible example, but there's like those alpha males that don't want to be around other dogs, like they're the boss. So you can have these characteristics even in reptiles, even though people think reptiles are stupid and dumb and whatever, you will see dominance sometimes in reptiles. So there will be one that'll try to be more dominating. The other is the opposite end of that. So let's say you had three snakes together and one of them isn't a strong character. It's more shy, it's more scared, it doesn't feel safe. So if it's going to be around other snakes, it's it's it might stop eating, it might just like it not do as well. So those are all your reasons that you probably shouldn't cohabilitate co your reptiles. Yes. No.